Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome again to the Marriage Blueprint webinar. Uh, today, we are going to talk about the system and program of divorce. Okay. And the reminder is we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. This you can find in Ephesians 6, verse 12. So it is well. The Bible says that we should say ye to the righteous that it is well. I said that this is going to be the trend that every time we have our webinars, I'm going to make sure I declare this over everyone that it is well. Isaiah 3.10. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. So this is why we are here. We know it is well but we need to eat the fruit of our doings, which is the manifestation of what God said. And that is why we have this blueprint webinar, because this is teaching us how we can go from a place of declarations and prophecies to the manifestation of what God said he will do. All right. I am your host. I did a full introduction last week. I'm just going to say hi to you guys tonight. And um, Joy, if you want to do the same, you can. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm excited to be here. Today is going to be amazing. Yes. <laughs> God is intentional about tonight, okay? He has interrupted me, interrupted Joy. <laughs> so today is exactly how he needs it to be for his glory. All right. So like I said, this is the goal of the webinar, reconciliation back to the Father, mindset transformation, right? We are here to gain understanding, achieve balance. We always approach things from a physical standpoint. It's time to successfully add the spiritual for the full manifestation of God's will for our lives. I also just want to thank everybody for the sacrifice of time. I know that it is late. I know that, but sacrifice is a weapon in the realm of the spirit. I didn't choose the time. It was given to me by God. And I know that he wants his work to be established. So it's so strategic. Okay. So thank you for the sacrifice of time. Um, we are here to receive restoration and manifest the promises of God. I just need um, someone to let me know what they learned from last week. Cause I want to make sure that what we are discussing takes root. You can just go ahead and put it in the chat. Yes, thank you. You are supposed to guard your mind. Thank you so much for that. So last week, we saw that Adam was existing as a single man. This was before Eve came. He was given the instruction to tend the garden, to keep it, to dress it, to name the animals. But when Eve came into the picture, we don't hear about her existing as a single woman. We hear that she immediately became a wife to Adam for the multiplication and expansion. So there is nowhere that it is recorded that Eve was existing as a single woman. Adam didn't see her washing clothes in the pond somewhere and think she was cute and said, I want you to be my wife. No, she was brought onto him as a wife. She existed for the purpose of the wife. So we in this generation and generations since then have developed a single lady mindset. So where exactly did we get the single lady mindset from? And it's unfortunate that although women are getting married, they still have a single lady mindset because they did not partner with the vision of God for marriage. And this is what the enemy capitalizes on in our homes. So again, Adam is the one who gave Eve her name. With the husband and wife, there is an order, husband over wife, okay? I'm not necessarily gonna go into that today, we also learned that who you marry matters, but it's not enough to marry right because Eve was created for Adam, but look at what happened to their destiny. Adam did not disobey and marry somebody else. It was Eve that was brought from God to him. So it's not enough to marry right. Who Moses got married to almost killed him, not directly because God gave Moses the instruction to circumcise his son and the wife was not in agreement with that. And because of that, while he was on his way to deliver the Israelites out of bondage, that disobedience almost killed him. And it was in that moment that the wife realized what she had done and then quickly circumcised the child and put the blood on Moses's feet. And that spirit passed over and Moses 
was then allowed to deliver the Israelites go into his destiny. But I want to just point out that number one, in that moment, she quickly realized her mistake and did follow the instruction. It was also going to be easy for her to not remember or not follow the instruction and Moses would be dead. Not only would Moses be dead, the Israelites will still be in bondage. God will have to raise somebody else for that. Marriage is God's vision, not our own. Okay. So let us not seek ourselves before getting into marriage. We must know God's vision because it's not ours. Like I pointed out last week, Adam didn't know Eve wasn't even there. The vision was God's. Whose will are you executing? Because a lot of us, we get into marriage and we never sought God on the vision. So how do we now know God's will? So all these years, whose will have we been executing? If you do work in an establishment, you have a job. We all are working people here. We have a job. You are executing the vision of a CEO. And if you are not executing the vision of a CEO efficiently, like up to their standard, they will fire you. Like without a question, they can warn you, warn you or fire you because you're not adding value to their own vision. When they established the company, you were not there, but you are working towards the vision. So we have to partner with God for the vision of marriage and our lives, okay? But unfortunately in the world, if you're not executing God's vision, like you have literally switched CEOs subconsciously. This is what is plaguing us in marriages, but we don't actually consciously know this. It's just what is subconsciously happening because it's not corporate. You cannot approach it with corporate principles. Yes, in the corporate world, you get fired. But in the real world, if you're not executing God's vision, then you literally switch CEOs and you're now executing another vision that is opposing God's, which is most likely the enemies. We talked about also the principle of two for manifestation. Okay, your two minds must agree. Your mind and your tongue must agree. Your tongue and your actions must agree. You cannot believe something and speak something that is opposite to what you believe. You cannot say something and act in a way that is opposite to what you're believing God for. And lastly, only the Holy Spirit can teach you how to have a successful marriage. The reason why I say this is because although I am hosting this webinar, I am telling everybody reconcile back to the father and know his vision for your life because I cannot mirror and duplicate my own marriage into you because my instruction is different. Okay. Even Moses, like with the rock, like God told him strike the rock, water would come out. And he did that. The second time he came to a familiar situation, he applied the former principle and that cost him his destiny. So everybody's instruction is different. So yield to the Holy Spirit. It is good to seek wise counsel. But at the end of the day, the Holy Spirit knows the instruction for your life. People can be vessels for the Holy Spirit to speak through, but you must seek God. So that is the recap. This right here was not even part of this presentation. The Lord inserted it by his hand. And he is so intentional about us having this transformation and us having this restoration in our lives and in our marriages. So if you guys will join me and open Hosea chapter four, this is what God inserted because we ask God for answers and he is answering because we just come to this world and we don't know what is happening. It just seems like everything is spiraling out of control. All right. Father, we just want to give you the glory for your mercy. Thank you for the spirit of understanding, oh God, that even as I'm speaking, your spirit of understanding is visiting the minds of these. Thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that every seed sown, oh God, according to your will will not be uprooted. I cover each and every one with the blood of Jesus. And I pray that even now, oh God, your word springs forth to deliver and break these chains in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and read. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. Okay, I'm just going to pause there for a second. Remember, before you can have knowledge, you must have understanding. His spirit of understanding is necessary for knowledge. So there is no knowledge of God in the land. By swearing, and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. 
Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people are as they that strive with the priests. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night, and I will destroy thy mother. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. My God, my God, my God. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their hearts on their iniquity. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them their doings. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Whoredom and wine and new wine take away the hearts. My people ask counsel at their stocks and their staff declared unto them, for the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err and they have gone whoring from under their God. They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms, because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore, your daughters shall commit whoredom, and your spouses shall commit adultery. I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery. For themselves are separated with whores, and they sacrifice with harlots. Therefore, the people that don't not understand shall fall. Though thou, Israel, play the harlots, Yet let not Judah offend, and come not ye unto Gilgal, neither go ye up to Bethaven, nor swear the Lord liveth. For Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. Their drink is sour. They have committed whoredom continually. Her rulers with shame do love. Give ye. The wind hath bound her up in her wings, and they shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices. That was a lot, but I'm going to break it down, okay? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There is just a huge cry out from God's hearts for us to know who he is. He says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge, and that knowledge is of him. We do not know our Father. You can check it by your fruits, your actions, your mind. There is a cry for us to know him and to know who we are in him. When you know who you are in him, your life will change. You cannot be overcome by the devil because he who lives in you is greater. Our fathers that came before us, our ancestors, they sinned against God. Even from the foundation of Adam and Eve, this sin is transgenerational. So we're just coming into it and we don't even know what is going on. But in the spiritual realm, there's ordinances. The Bible literally says, because they do not know God, this is their portion. This is the portion of those that do not know God. Look at what he said. These spirits, these spirits, people just think that men are willingly committing adultery. There is a spirit that is harvesting marriages. You know, and this is, this is such an outcry of marriages. And I believe God just gave us an answer. When we come back to him, what did he say? Israel, his people backslid. When we backslide, this is our portion. But most importantly, nothing is physical. There is a spirit doing this and harvesting. The spirit of whoredom. It is so deep. I just want us to start seeing that. What we are experiencing physically first initiates spiritually. And how we stop experiencing this evil is to reconcile back to our father. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Okay, what does God mean? Because 
your understanding of perish might just be somebody is dead physically, but that's not all it entails. That's not all it means. When you look at your life and there's an area that's failing, there's reconciliation to be made with God, whether it's to reconcile your understanding or your knowledge of him. May God have mercy on us in our homes and open our eyes to this understanding. Father, thank you for your word. And thank you because this is why the finished work of Jesus is so important. It is possible to reconcile back to the father because of what Jesus did, because of what he came and did. So if you're noticing traits in your spouse and there's adultery and all this stuff, the blood of Jesus, the Bible says for this cause, the son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of Satan. You cannot use your eyes and be seeing evil in your marriage and you're just allowing it to happen. There is a spirit that needs to be sent out of the home. This is how to win. Jesus came for this, that we may have dominion and power. Adam and Eve, from the foundation of their union, allowed the devil to manipulate their understanding. He planted the seed of doubt in their minds. They were ushered out of the garden into earth. That is the devil's playing ground, his playing field. This is where the, the earth is the devil's playing field. This earth, we were not even supposed to be in. We were supposed to be where God put us, but because of Adam and Eve, God shut out the garden and pushed them into earth. And this is where the devil is roaming about. And you just want to sit here and not apply spiritual principles and not understand that your marriage and everything exists spiritually first. And then you're not even praying certain prayers and then just allowing the enemy to one day harvest. No, absolutely not. Not your destiny, not your marriage. This version of your life is created from an altered perception. I want you to know this. How you exist right now is created from an altered perception. Because if you are not completely and fully in the will of God, the enemy was able to sway you in your mind somewhere. This is why we must reconcile back to the Father and have the spirit of understanding. So let me move forward here. But I want to say this, as I continue to move through this presentation, you're going to notice the trend of how the enemy does derail us from the original mindset that God needs us to have for the manifestation. But Hosea 4, I encourage everyone, go back and read it. Go back and read it. Because a lot of people are, I even received, um, Somebody messaged me on Instagram saying, how come fornication is multiplying? How come this is multiplying adultery, blah, blah, blah. Read Hosea 4. You will know why. You will know exactly why. There is a spirit of boredom. God is set to release answers and miracles. So let's talk about the systems and programming, because this is how to successfully identify where the devil is holding you in your home. Like he's very subtle. It's hidden, it's embedded in your mind subconsciously because that is how you operate. A system is a set of principles or procedures according to which something is done. It's an organized framework or method. It runs on default. Once you set it up, it just runs on default. That's a system. Programming, it's shaping the mind gradually and persistently until a new set of standards are accepted and believed without conscious awareness, all right? So here you have the picture of a factory, okay? You can see everybody diligently working. They're creating a system. They're shipping it out. Everyone is getting their products. It's seamless. Nobody's bothering them. Everybody knows what to do. They know their work. They know how to operate. Now a competitor arises. Let's say that this factory is making drinks, okay? And a competitor also wants to make drinks but he knows that this person has so many customers. So what is he going to do? He's going to hit the factory. He's not going to hit the factory where, I mean, they can just quickly and easily fix it. Like, let's say the, the bottle has like labels. He's not going to just make it so there's a typo or maybe the label can't stick properly. No, he's going to target the bottles so the drink cannot pour inside it, or he's going to target the lid. There's no way they can ship out something that's open. He wants to halt the progression of this factory and destroy it. So nothing comes out how it's supposed to anyways. That's what the competitor does. Pray for this competitor. Because <laughs> why do you even think to destroy somebody? <laughs> anyways, so that's what happens though, okay? 
But this is a system. The program is to make drinks and they have a system that executes this program. Similarly, this is a factory, okay? Because men and women have been given the command to be fruitful and multiply. The competitor wanted this for himself. What did he do? He targeted the foundation so that anything that they produce will not exist how it's supposed to. This is a factory. We are producing the will of God, advancing his kingdom. We populate the earth, the principle of two. When something bad happens to this factory, immediately crisis management comes in. They start troubleshooting. What went wrong? How can we fix it? How can we start pushing out our products again? Blah, blah, blah. They know what's at stake. However, when this factory is hit, what happens? What happens? What do we do? Nothing. I beg, Cha. I beg, I don't have his time self. Who taught you that? Is that how to? We are called to be liberators. Something hits your factory and you just allow it. Look at the crisis management. For the corporates, they're shaking hands. Oh, well done, well done. See our own crisis management. They can't even look at each other. Forgetting that, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. You want to keep pushing out, pushing out products that are broken, products that their mind is gone. You're just pushing it out, pushing it out. Where is the crisis management for us? Because we actually do have crisis management, but we have been persuaded out of it. We have our own crisis management. It exists. Our crisis management is prayer, declaring the word of God, applying the understanding to obey his instruction. That's our crisis management. But you talk to your girlfriend, you see a post on Instagram and you give up. You don't know there's a spirit and there are spirits that are on assignments for this cause, for this reason. The Bible does record that the devil roams to and fro the earth, seeking who to devour. This is what he does for a living, hello. This is his work. So you don't have the crisis management ready to be active when problem happens. Of course, he's going to reap the harvest of divorce because we've been persuaded out of the understanding of prayer, of fasting, of obedience, of instruction, of reconciliation with the father. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We are too familiar and we lack the understanding because if we honestly understood this, we would invoke this crisis management in our foundation so that anything we produce can stand for generations. Everything that we are misinterpreting is stealing from us. You look at your situation and you use the devil's mind to interpret it and process it instead of your heavenly father who gave this to you. The devil does not own the manufacturer's manual. He doesn't. God does. But when anything happens, we just use our own mind or the devil's mind, and we don't even consult God. We just act out of our feelings. This is how he capitalizes on us. May God help us. I promise. I'm not shouting at anybody here. Please. I'm very sweet and loving. <laughs> Sorry. But God wants to release miracles to us. Today, that's what I woke up to. God wants to release miracles. Miracles to us, but our understanding, our understanding and our minds is what is in the way of that. So this webinar today is going to break those mental barriers and limitations. When God wanted to bless and fulfill a man, he brought a woman to complete him, to expand him. When the devil, who is always imitate, trying to imitate God, when he tries to bring a man down, what does he do? He either brings his Jezebel spirit, spirit of whoredom, or he uses the wife. He plays on the emotions of the wife to bring that man down. Look at what happened with Eve. He deceived her. Who God brought to bless him became his, like, I mean, come on, come on. You don't have to marry wrong to miss it. So last week we talked about Amazon. Okay. And I, I love the analogy so much. It's here again today. By the way, the same way the devil seeks the earth and roams about the earth looking for who to devour, God is also looking for who to lift, who to bless, because he's interested in his vision to expand his kingdom. So don't like God is, is active and ready. There's something missing, though, with our own perception and our manifestation. Before I move on to this, please let me say this, okay? There are people currently, you know, in your scope, in your, in your circles, they are praying for husbands, right? 
But the problem is like, like I said, the foundation is faulty. The factory producing men, women is faulty. So there's a chance that hell has waged war on this man. And you're just praying and crying and longing for him to come. I just want my husband. I want my husband. I want, I want my husband. But you're not praying that God's will be done in his life. You're not praying that God break the bondage that's holding him. Remove the scales from his eyes. Like, you're not like, you're just praying, God, bring my husband. It's not, you know, it's not like, it's not fair. Oh, this one's got married. Now, is that what it's about? That's not what it's about. We have to pray God's will over his life and partner with the Holy Spirit to pray for him. You don't know what hell is doing. Let me just keep going. So here we see illustrated Amazon. There's a system and Amazon has a system and a program, right? So let's say you had the instruction, go buy a tablet. And you're like, okay, let me purchase a tablet. Then you open Amazon because you know, okay, that they have their system, you trust their program, everything. You're about to type tablet to search. Immediately, something tells you, do you really need that tablet? I mean, it's not really in your budget. You know, like maybe you shouldn't get it right now. For whatever reason, something in your mind is just like trying to convince you out of it. You know what I'm saying? And as subtle as that is, and you reasoned it with your mind, the instruction was for you to get the tablet. And you just passively allowed something to convince you out of it. Immediately planting the seed of doubt of the former instruction, get the tablet. Because there's a mind you use to open Amazon. So how come you've opened Amazon and your mind is doing this now? At the end of the day, you end up not getting the tablets. Does it mean that you couldn't have gotten the tablet? No. The tablet could have been shipped to you immediately, even expedited, because there's an option that you check. Instead of getting it next week, you can get it tomorrow, but you have to pay a little extra. But you did not receive it because your mind ushered you out of the manifestation without you even knowing it. Nothing changed, you know, or even the seed of delay. Your mind tells you, no, 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 don't get it now. Let's say it's February. And you're like, oh, you know, let me not get it now. Let me just wait till December because I know by then I would have had my bonus. I would have had this and this and that. You've delayed your manifestation just like that, just by processing in your mind. Again, nothing is wrong with Amazon. You can easily get it, <laughs> but you're the one ushering yourself out of the manifestation. Maybe not you, but maybe there's a spirit who is influencing you out of your manifestation, just like what happened with Adam and Eve. The strategies are the same. Your understanding can shape your destiny that's the principle. Your understanding can shape your destiny is the principle. It can either be persuaded out by the devil, just like what happened with Adam and Eve, or it can help you achieve. Your understanding can help you achieve destiny, like what Jesus Christ is trying to teach us. Your understanding, your own mind is responsible for the manifestation because it's your mind and your understanding that lets you obey instruction the right way for the full manifestation. The Bible tells us time and time again, lean not on your own understanding. Do not lean on your own understanding. And I believe it says this because it knows our understanding can be influenced. So instead of that, just come and receive the spirit of understanding from the Holy Spirit, who is very generous, by the way, and will give it to you. So now the reason why the devil does this is he influences your thought process because he doesn't want you to have the manifestation. It's either you don't get the manifestation or you don't get the full manifestation, but it's all happening in your mind because equally you can apply the seed of faith. You can apply the seed of speed. You can apply the seed of understanding for the full manifestation and get your tablet immediately, but your mind can persuade you from getting it. So like I said, the system and program of Amazon remains the same. It's up and running. All right. Our various perceptions and interactions is what, you know, changes our outcome, but it has nothing to do with Amazon. Amazon is the same. You place your order, you put your details and that's it. You get your product, you, whatever you're doing with yourself has nothing to do with Amazon. They remain the same. Their system and program is the same. Whether you receive your manifestation or not, they are up and running. This is what we need to understand. It's not God. It's not him. It's not him. Our eyes need to be open to who, what is wrong now. So the same way God requires us to apply his spirit of understanding, Amazon has their own understanding. You follow the instructions. You cannot apply your own understanding to Amazon. Like where it says pay and you're supposed to put your card details, you cannot start putting your address. It will not come. You cannot use your own mind and do what you want to do. No, you have to follow the understanding of Amazon. 
So if you know the vision of God for marriage, you must also follow the instructions and apply the understanding or else the manifestation will be halfway or not at all. But Zion Restored is established so that people can receive their full manifestations. So like I said, all of this, whether you want to manifest delay and, and all that for yourself or the seed of faith speed and all of that is up to you. It's in your mind. It's in your understanding. It's up to you because Amazon remains the same and so does God. God remains the same. So whether you want to manifest or not manifest, that's you. It's on you. It's not on God. It's not on God at all. This is a lot. I, I know um, it is a lot of information, but everyone is going to uh, get a copy of this. Okay. I'm going to have to pick up the pace, but this is a system of understanding. Like I said, the enemy, he targets your mind, your understanding, because he does not want you to have the manifestation or the full manifestation. If he cannot stop all of the manifestation, he doesn't want you to have the full one. That's why he targets your mind and your body, because that's how you execute. So really quickly, I want uh, my co-host to paint the picture of what obedience to instruction looks like, because understanding is critical for obedience, not the understanding you're applying, the understanding that God needs you to have for the miracle. So I'm going to hand over to my co-host right away. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for the powerful words. I'm just going to move, dive into this. All right. So there are endless possibilities when we follow God's instruction in obedience. Um, and our human mind needs to learn that God's power has no limits. You know, obedience to God's instruction is aligning with God. And aligning with God is where our full capacity can be expressed. So I'm going to be giving like two illustrations. One was that of Moses. Moses was faced with a very scary situation where Pharaoh and his army chased he and the people that he was supposed to be leading to safety. And in front of them was a dead end, the Red Sea. And behind them were the enemies they had ran from. You know, we all know the story of Moses and, you know, the children of Israel. And, you know, from reading the story with emphasis on Exodus chapter 14, I noticed a number of things. Number one, God never leaves us in the dark. At every point, God told Moses, I have hardened Pharaoh's heart. However, I will glorify myself through it. So God speaks. And if you feel you can't hear him, it's probably because you expect him to say something new. Meanwhile, what he said before is what he expects you to still run with. So God is not deaf or dumb. He can speak and he, short, he shortly does hear, you know, but he wants us to hearken to his instruction at every point in time. And the second thing I noticed from the story of Moses is God's stance is consistent from beginning to the end. Um, the twists and turns do not shake God. God's stance is consistent. Okay, when the twists and turns come, of course, the people in the book of Exodus shook, you know, but God, God's stance is solid. God already knew the end, and the end was victory for the children of Israel. So if you read through, you would see that God led them to the Red Sea in Exodus chapter 14, verse 2. Literally, God tells Moses, go in this direction and camp towards the sea. So basically, God led them to the Red Sea. And the Red Sea was the greatest sign of defeat, humanly speaking. But to God, it was a sign of a miracle about to unfold before their eyes. So God's stance is always victory. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. God's stance is always victory. He gives an instruction. His instruction is leading us to victory. The third thing I noticed is that I noticed the ministry of angels present to help to cause nature and things to align in favor of God's will as they walk in obedience to God's instruction. Because alignment with God naturally attracts the ministry of angels because they work for God's purpose to fulfill God's plan. So angels are tools God uses to establish his will, whether to bless or to save or um, to destroy Whatever God wants to do, he uses his angels. We can see it in various stories in the Bible. Check through scriptures, you'll see when God wanted to 
um, delivered children of Israel. Angels were sent. An angel was sent to Gabriel when God wanted to bless the house of Zechariah. An angel was sent to, to Mary. And so just so many stories of how God sends his angels in helping to fulfill his purpose and plan. Your alignment through obedience opens you up to the ministry of the help or divine assistance from angels. If we look at an opposite story, um, we all know how the story of Moses and the children of Israel went. So um, Moses obeyed every instruction. And um, because of time, I won't be able to go into details, but he listened to everything God said. I gave three points. The first one is God never leaves us in the dark. You know, at every point he told Moses, oh, this is what's going to happen. This is what I'm doing. And the second thing was his stance was solid. From the beginning to the end, God did not shake. He knew victory was sure. So even though he was leading them in paths that seemed um, like failure to the natural mind, it still spelled victory. As long as Moses kept following God's instruction and, and, you know, when at every point he would come back to God and say, what next? And God look, you know, he comes to God and say, okay, fine. You've led us to the sea. We're here. These people are gaining in on us. And God says, stretch your rod over the water. And he did. And, and the sea was parted. We all know how that ended. However, I mean, it was a huge story. It was a huge testimony. It was a huge thing. And that's what Satan wants to deprive us of from obeying and getting to the victorious end. Because when you're looking at the mindset, I'm looking at what people would think, you would see that, oh, um, their suggestions would be like, can you not see what it looks like? It's a dead end. It's obviously a dead end. It's obviously a dead end. But to God, if you keep following his instruction, you would see that, I mean, it's leading to victory. The second um, illustration was of disobedience, basically. It's just to show us the two sides. If we look at the story of Lot and the way things ended in Gen from Genesis 18, you'd see that um, God, God says he can't hide what he does from his friend Abraham. And he tells him about the destruction coming um, to Sodom, where his nephew Lot was. And you can see in Genesis chapter 19 from verse 1, please go back and read if you can. Um, again, the angels of God... Um, got to Sodom. And Lot recognized, if you read in, in, uh, in chapter 18, you see that the angels came with God and they visited Abraham and Abraham recognized them. And it was from that point that God had spoken to Abraham and said, oh, by this time next year, you would have your child. So they brought blessing. Again, this same visitation was happening to um, Lot, but this time it was to bring safety to Lot. It was to bring safety to Lot. And Lot recognized them, which was a great thing. You can recognize the help of God. However, what do you do with the instruction that God gives through his help? And um, he welcomed them to his house. Okay, we can see that in Genesis 19, 17 to 26. Um, every instruction given to Lot was argued. Every instruction. First of all, he tried to protect the angels um, and even give his daughters to be raped so he can be the Messiah to those who had actually come to give him divine help. All the instructions given um, were contended with by Lot's wisdom, his wife's emotions, his children's wisdom. See, disobedience to God's instruction leaves you with your own wisdom, and your own wisdom will always lead to destruction. So Lot chose a different location. So the angels say, okay, fine. Your obedience is your role to take in delivery of the manifestation of God's blessing and miracle. So that's basically what I was just going to say. Thank you so much for that illustration. Like there's just so much that even brought to my attention because every time we're out of disobedience, no matter how small God leaves us to our own will and the manifestation now is not full, even though God can still have mercy, you know, and make everything work together for our good, but versus just obeying in the first place. So thank you for painting that picture. Wow. So real quick, I just want to highlight that it wasn't a demonic attack that disqualified Adam and Eve from the garden and their destinies being wiped out. It wasn't a demonic attack. This was something that they chose, right? The person who had all power and dominion made a choice that ushered them out of destiny, out of promise and out of the garden. I just want to say that if God is instructing you to do something, he knows why he's instructing you to do something, regardless of what it looks like, you know? And I also want to paint the picture just because of time that even though you may desire to choose something, I want you to align all of your desires with God because it could be a projected desire from the enemy. 
Adam and Eve thought they needed that fruit so bad. The devil will never tell you everything. But God, like Joy pointed out over and over again, never leaves you in the dark. The devil left out the parts that they will be kicked out of destiny. He didn't tell them that. He just made something so desirable to them. And when they chose it, look what happened. God never leaves us in the dark. The devil does. So every desire, every thought you have, you have to measure it with God. Because if you use your own mind to process it, you're most likely going to choose it. And you're most likely going to reap the harvest the devil is trying to plant. We must pray for the spirit of understanding so that we can process the word of God and his will like the correct way for the full manifestation, not a half manifestation, not no manifestation. We need to learn the spirit of understanding because the perception and the understanding of Adam and Eve is what was challenged. Moses also, we just praised him for obeying God, also went and disobeyed and it cost him his promise, the promised land that he toiled for. He couldn't even enter it because God said, speak, and he struck it. It's still the rock. Water still came out, but the instruction was different. So we must allow the understanding of God to come into us so that we can obey and take instruction and take action. If not, the manifestation will not be full. Moses's manifestation was not full. The Israelites went, but he couldn't go because before he was supposed to be part of it. And like Jesus, because Jesus Christ came and died and showed us our example and showed us the mind we need to have. When the devil tried to challenge his understanding, he refused. He refused to shift it. He refused to change it. The devil said, oh, cast yourself. He refused to process it in the way the devil wanted him to. But I'm just saying, he had a guard on his mind. He had the spirit of understanding from God and did not allow a different understanding to change his manifestation. So that's the mind we need to have. There is a common misconception. People think just because God is involved, it must come to pass. Yes, that's true. But what part are you playing? Because there's moments of disobedience where the manifestation of his word couldn't find expression because of disobedience. So Adam and Eve, like I said, God was right there with them. God was right there with them. But they had a choice because God gave every man choice. And this is actually the loophole that the devil uses to bring man down. He makes you choose his own will for your life. He makes you choose his own desire for your life without you knowing it. That is why it's so important to reprogram your subconscious brain because it's, it's just aligned to give the devil what he wants, to let him keep stealing from you. The power of choice, because he knows that he cannot force you to, to do his will, but he can make you choose it because that is actually the loophole. If you choose it, he doesn't get penalized because you chose it. He keeps stealing. He, he has access. It's a portal of entry. He can gain access and do what he wants. You chose it. We need Jesus. We just need Jesus. Principalities and powers, they know their place. They cannot disobey God, but they will make you choose because you are the one who has authority and power. We have to do a work on our minds. What are we choosing? What are we understanding? Let God wash all that out with his own spirit of understanding. I put the on and off button. I said, when you say yes, you're turning on a button to a system. That doesn't mean you've you know, activated the system. It just means you turned it on, okay? Because there's still something we must apply for the system to now function and run. And then there's something we must apply again for it to now be maintained. So saying like, for instance, when I say yes, Jesus, come and be my Lord. I've said yes. Now, the system that I'm going to run is applying spiritual principles that allow the finished work to become my reality. And then I maintain. But saying, yes, I just turned it on. But I can also turn off the devil system in my life. Do you get what I'm saying? Not just by turning off, but I must apply the principles that ensure that it has been shut down. Not rebooting, rebooting. Every once in a while, he knows how to get me. No. That's you just rebooting his system. You've got to turn it off, shut it down from working in your life, period. And you can do that because of what Jesus did. But there's an understanding that you must have, okay? Our choices are powerful enough to keep God's will without expression, okay? And it's, powerful, it's also powerful enough to allow the devil to keep robbing us. So if you do not currently exist in the perfect and complete will of God, you're being robbed somewhere. 
And ultimately it is you because God is God. It's not him. So ultimately it is you. There's something you're misunderstanding. There's something you're not choosing or there's something you're choosing. So programming is a very dangerous weapon. This is, this is what the devil is doing from the foundation programming, what you watch, what you listen to. It's all programming. It's gearing you by default. Like I said, the devil has put a system in all of us for programming um, because it's hard to break away from that because it, it runs on default. It runs on default. And it's also hard to identify it because like I said, for instance, you brush your teeth, right? You don't even think about it. You get up, you brush your teeth because you want your teeth to be cleaned. You don't want cavities. You want your teeth to be white. You know, there's a system. There's a system that you're brushing your teeth. It's a system. White teeth is programming. Like it's a program of white teeth, but the system you're brushing every day, you get up. You don't even think about it. It's, it you, just, you just do it. So there's a, there's a dynamic between program and system, systems and programming. A program cannot run without a system. That's why it's important to shut down the system that the devil is using in your life, right? Because um, when you're being constantly programmed, maybe the, the devil keeps saying white teeth, white teeth, white teeth, white teeth, white teeth. You enter the system of teeth brushing because you want white teeth. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what happens. So your programming is what determines your perception and that's what now enters your subconscious brain. Like now, how we go about marriage. This is not the understanding God needed us to have. The devil has given us another understanding. So we approach marriage wrongly and get a halfway manifestation. When I say halfway, because sometimes the devil can't even stop you from getting married. So get married. But the manifestation of that marriage is not it. It's not what God wanted at all, at all. You know, pastors and prophets and they're praying for people. They're blessing people. They're pushing people into their marriage, prophesying marriage. I was, my marriage was prophesied on me. You know, and not that I was even looking for marriage. I, I was very young, but it was a prophecy. They prophesied, oh, you get married, da, 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 pray, 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 pray for me. I, I, I got married <laughs> and I almost didn't survive it. Husband, 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 I'm coming in Jesus' name. It's not the answer. This mind, we got to do the work to reprogram and be, be born again and put on a new mind, a new consciousness. That is how to maintain the institution of marriage with the understanding that God needs you to have not the one the world gave you just because he bought you flowers is, is qualifying him to be like come don't even get i'm not even going to enter there if i do we'll stay here for like 10 hours i'm not even going to enter there there's an understanding marriage has an understanding that you have to have marriage has a system a program it is the program but it has a system of how to operate it with the understanding of the most high god who the vision belongs to you can't get into marriage and do your own thing and expect for it to just be, you know? Yes, they're supposed to prophesy blessings and marriage to you. Yes, it's biblical, it's scriptural, but we, we should have done the work. We're all programmed not to prepare. I don't know how he did it. I don't know how the devil did this. Nobody is actually programmed to prepare for marriage strategically with the understanding that marriage that you need, that God-given understanding. I'm not saying an understanding that tolerates whatever, eh, uh, by God's mercy anyways, no. No, that's not even it either to endure and just be sulking your whole life just because no, no. You're supposed to enjoy marriage for kingdom advancement. You, I mean, there's just, marriage is gorgeous. It's beautiful. There's an understanding you need to have though so that the system can work in your favor. If not, it'll be flooding you because you're operating from the devil system, but you want what you want the program of marriage but you're operating the devil's system for his program of divorce. God help us. Like we literally struggle to have faith when it should be our default. It's faith should be how we exist. Our default mind should be in faith, knowing that our father can do and has done all things. All things were created already. Like faith is how we should exist, but somehow, because of manipulation and altering our perception and our processing and our understanding, we struggle to gather faith. It's something we now have to gather instead of just existing. That's Jesus Christ existed in faith. Hmm. The answer is, is to know God, to know him, to know who you are in him and to understand the finished work of Jesus Christ.
So we do not fight each other. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Jesus Christ rebuked Peter. Peter loved Christ. Like he did not want Jesus to die. He said, get behind me. Because the agenda of the devil was disguised as love in the mindset of Peter. Jesus said, get behind me. Peter's like, I'm expressing how much I love you. He said, I mean, Satan, get behind me. But the devil's agenda was disguised in the mind of Peter as love. And Peter thought he was loving Jesus. Jesus had a destiny to fulfill. You cannot get in his mind. You could not get in his mind. And he asked us to do the same thing. But Jesus knew God. Do you know God? Do you know him? Do you know him? Really, really know him? Because faith should be your subconscious instead of doubt. So we must meditate on the Bible verses day and night. Guard your mind. When you meditate on the word, it cleanses your subconscious. All the programming the devil put in you is gone. I'm just going to summarize this page. Renewing our minds, putting on the new man. You cannot skip it. You cannot pick. Okay, let me just renew my mind. You must also put on the new man. If you want the manifestation of God, you can't skip anything. You can't pick and choose what you're going to obey. And again, faith, like I said, is our subconscious. So if you're believing for change in your husband, in your wife, you must present yourself as though you believe and you see that image before you. If you believe your husband is wayward and, and you're praying to God to give him wisdom, you cannot treat him as he's wayward. You must speak and believe and act as like he is already wise. That's how to exist. You, you cannot want something and use your tongue and your actions to discredit it. No. If you believe your husband is stupid or something, I'm just using examples. I'm not saying anybody here believes that. Or if you believe your husband is not faithful, you cannot, mm, this one stuff. Mm, mm. And you're praying, you're in your secret place praying. And you're praying, but you turn around and you treat him like that. You've canceled it. I said, everything must align. Everything must align. You can't pick and choose, okay? If you believe in God for restoration, you have to forget the former things. Because the more you meditate on, on, on the past, it's going to keep manifesting. Forget it and enter your restoration. It, does it no longer exists. The same way you expect God to blot out your transgressions. Blot out the past and move forward into your new life. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Let us let go of familiarity. It's been preached to us. Preach, 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 preach. Oh, all things, God is a miracle worker. God is a miracle worker. He is a miracle worker. Stop familiarizing it. He is the alpha. He is the omega. Stop familiarizing it. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Stop familiarizing it. It's exactly what he said. It's exactly what he said. He still answers those names today. If you receive it, that's on you. If you don't, it's still on you. But he still answers those names, even now. What you choose is your choice. It's your mind. What you understand is what you choose. What you choose can either bless you or, or curse you. It's all happening in your mind. And that's why Jesus needs to exist in your mind. You have the mind of Christ. There's something he knew when he walked on this earth. So these are the subtle strategies, okay? I'm gonna breeze through this. I'm gonna breeze through this. In patience, you're believing God for something. The devil knows how your, your subconscious mind is programmed. So he knows exactly where, what to trigger to set you off. But you're supposed to be standing on it. Let's say somebody is believing God for a promotion at work. You've been praying to God for a promotion, praying to God for a promotion. You get fired. Somebody gets fired. Immediately, that person has lost all the faith in the world. Immediately. The devil knows how to shift you, how to shift your focus so that you can process it with a different understanding than what God gave you. Impatience. Impatience. Daniel chapter 10. Go and read it, please. In fact, I'm going to read one verse for you. God just helped me. And thank you guys. I know it's a sacrifice of time. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel. A thing was revealed. Daniel didn't just run off with it. It was revealed, right? And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long and he understood the thing. He didn't just get a vision and say, oh, maybe it means this, maybe it means that. He understood the thing and had understanding of the vision, not his own understanding. God can command the thing, but what mind are you using to process it? He had understanding. God gave him understanding. It's not just because Joseph interpreted a dream, now he's established and he became second in command. No, 
he had understanding because he could have prophesied amiss. There was an understanding. Understanding follows command, instruction, vision, understanding, understanding. That's what makes you have obedience. That's what makes the, the prophecy and all these things manifest, understanding, right? Because there's how God can speak to you about your husband, about your marriage, and you use a different mind to process it. Understanding is important. God's understanding, not your own, not your own. Do you understand me? What understanding are you applying to your life, to your instruction? So I'm sorry, but I just had to say that part. So anyways, Daniel did not waver. He did not shift. Like God sent the, the answer. Immediately, Daniel set his heart. As in, he just agreed to do it. God sent the answer. He didn't even need to fast. Daniel did not waver. He did not shift. He did not change his posture. He stayed and stayed until the manifestation crystallized. But the enemy knows how to throw us out. As soon as we notice a distraction, we just get out of our faith. If Daniel would have said that, only God knows what would have happened to all these people. Because it's never just about you. It's about generations. Daniel stayed. So the enemy likes to put impatience into you. So you miss your manifestation, right? But God still performs miracles, even now. Do not allow the seed of faith to easily be uprooted. That is what is going to produce your miracle. So you have to do, read the word. Like I told you last Friday, what I, my strategy is if God says something to me, I start looking for a verse because I need to put the word of God into my subconscious brain so that nothing can shift me. So that no matter what I see, I'm like, no, 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 no. This is not what God told me. And I go back. I, I don't, I don't want, let myself shift. I don't allow myself to think on a new understanding. No, I know what he said. I know the mind I had when he said it. So I'm not changing it. I will not. And my manifestation has come. Another subtle strategy the devil uses is he makes what we see or what we do not see dictate our belief. This is backwards. This is backwards. If we don't see it, we call it forth. This is how we exist. This is how we exist. If we see something that does not align, we rebuke it and we send it out. This is us. We must begin to know if our victory is in knowing who God is, knowing who we are, knowing how to have wisdom and understanding. That is our way out of bondage. The chains that are in our mind, we cannot see them. At least the Israelites, they were able to see their own chains. We cannot see, it's, it's meant, it's spiritual, but they are breaking tonight. We exist as sons of God, like God created us in his image. Jesus Christ came and died for the works of Satan to be destroyed. So why are there still hints of the works of Satan in your life? Crush it, get it out. That's how we exist. Speak what you want to see. Refuse to speak anything otherwise. Treat your husband in a way that you have believed. If you believe he has restored, approach him as somebody who is restored. Don't wait for it to happen before you start acting like it. No. If you're believing for your husband to be wealthy, speak to him as if somebody who is wealthy. Speak to him, king, billionaire. Like, speak to him. See it. Don't wait till he's, he's having money before you start. Ah, Starlin, hey. No. you got to... You got to already act it, live it, and it will come. It's how we exist, okay? Strife, strife. This is the devil's portal into homes. He makes the atmosphere like heavy. So angelic activity, like Joy said and pointed out so beautifully, when you are in alignment, angelic activity is working because they must establish the will of God. Guess what? The enemy noticed, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Jesus, these people are about to get this miracle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, 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 you go here, do this, do this, do this. You know what I'm saying? To scatter the unity that you guys are having. And you actually allow it to happen. You allow him to scatter it. Why? Why? And I'm doing this, but this is how he was getting me and my husband. Strife, strife. Look what happened to Abraham and Lot's strife. And at, look at what happened to Lot because of strife. Look at what happened, strife. You know, this is how the devil enters strife he messes up your atmosphere he now makes you think one thing discord you guys are not in unity anymore you know so just moving forward ignorance i'm just going to name them ignorance you actually are not applying the principles of god like the things that are supposed to bless your life you're supposed to have a system for it but he makes you not prioritize those things that's what that's what he does you're too busy for god but the things that you need to be doing is actually what is going to bless your life it's backwards. I hope we're starting to see it. 
all right? Because the more the enemy can keep you away from the spiritual realm, the more he can divert your blessings, the more he can steal from you. We are not separate from God. If this is the only thing you remember, you are not separate from God. You were created for him for the purpose of his kingdom expansion. You are not separate from him. You are his partner. You are supposed to execute and express his will on earth. His glory is supposed to find expression in you. You're not separate from him. But we live like we are. We act like, you know, God needs to do us favors. He needs you to move. I'm very dramatic. I'm sorry. But I just got like, <laughs> so real quick, the devil is, he's so good at imitating feelings. He gives you feelings. He gives you desires, urges, thoughts, patterns. This is actually what's been wiping lineages out from generation to generation. Patterns, patterns. They think they can't break out of it. It's just embedded in them. But we're breaking all of that so um, the devil even tries to imitate God, but he is the counterfeit. But I want you to understand that we all know that the devil lies, but I want you to understand that he actually uses deception. It's not so obvious, but when you're trained by the Holy Spirit, you can easily see the counterfeit. Just like on earth, if I say I bought someone a Louis Vuitton bag and the V is like this instead of like this, you'll know it's fake, right? <laughs> But even at that, that is still kind of obvious. But I want you to know that there are different grades to the counterfeit, to where it's not visible to the natural eye. It looks very authentic, but it is not real. So in those kind of cases, you need somebody who's trained in identifying counterfeits to tell you if something is real or not. We are trained by the Holy Spirit and his discernment and his understanding to know what's real or not. That's how we see. It's not always obvious. He attacks through fear. He gives you fear in your mind, in your dreams. He keeps putting images before you. Like if you're believing God for restoration in your marriage, the devil will keep get put, giving you thoughts about how he used to do this. He's doing this. He's doing this. He's doing this. But the nature of man can change. It can change. It can change. Nothing is too hard for God. So do not entertain his lies. Okay, maybe that was the old hymn, but according to the Bible, I read all things have passed away. All things have become new. And that is the consciousness you're going to use to get your restoration. Spiritual manipulation. There are people who come from a bloodline where they did demonic things. They actually made covenants with spirits for progress, for this, for that. And so what happens is, although they're blessing, they're also taking and stealing and killing. So there are some people who come into this world and they have deep oppression and they don't know why. They don't know why. This is why. Somebody back, back, back then did this. Opened the door for all this rubbish. But the, the foundation of Jesus Christ is superior. If you enter him, this stops. Nothing can do all that to you anymore. But lack of knowledge is not allowing you to enter the consciousness of what Jesus did. So it persists. You've got to understand who you are, what you are, how you are who God is. And again, I want to encourage all of you music. You're just singing it. But what are you singing? What are you? That's still talking. In fact, we sing and worship to God. We sing and worship God. So whatever we're singing is manifesting. What you're singing, lonely, I am so lonely. Don't be surprised if that's your manifestation. <laughs> I mean, just because you're not processing it with that understanding does not mean that's not what's happening. Anyways, release the thoughts that no longer serve you do not speak on it again speak superior things plant superior seeds on the superior foundation of jesus christ boom right on time i i rushed through it i'm not gonna lie because tonight i feel a deep inspiration to pray about <laughs> my co-host is laughing about chains being broken my co-host Joy and I, we are in agreement about this. God wants to perform miracles tonight. Like he wants to release his spirit to perform miracle of restoration and to break bondage. So I'm going to go ahead and read. This is 1 John 3 verse 8. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to let you, cons once you finish typing, I'm going to go into this Bible verse. Wow. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Instruction is too important. Instruction 
with the understanding that God needs you to have is yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. First John three, verse eight, it says, he that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whatever it is, whatever situation, did Jesus not come and die to destroy the works of Satan? It is already done. It is our understanding that makes it look like it's persisting. So I'm going to invite my co-host to just worship over us and let us pray. Because again, I want for this seed that God planted not to be uprooted, not to be uprooted. So go ahead, Joy, the floor is yours. Father, we give you thanks because every chain is broken. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, limitless power in the name of Jesus. Yeah, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Oh, yeah, to break every chain the devil has put on us. To break every chain, and you're causing liberation. You're causing freedom. You're causing liberation. You're causing freedom. You're breaking every chain right now. Breaking every chain right now. Breaking every chain. I see you doing miracles and breaking every chain, causing healing. Bringing restoration, oh yeah. And there's an army, an army of the liberated rising up. Remana kamano zanarina. There's an army, an army of the liberated rising up, rising up. There's an army of the liberated, of the delivered. Raising up to to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Oh yeah, break every chain. You are breaking every chain right now. Breaking every chain right now. I hear the chains falling. Oh, I hear the chains falling. They are falling down right now. They are falling down right now. Oh, I hear the chains falling. I hear it falling now, now. I hear the chains falling. I hear it falling now, now. I hear it falling now, right now. I hear it falling right now. Chains that have bound the mind. Chains that have bound the mind. I see liberation right now. I see liberation right now. I see liberation right now. We overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. And the word of God is truth. And the word of God sets us free. We receive the truth of God. We receive his truth, and his truth sets us free. We have been given the spirit of God, the spirit of liberation. Our minds are liberated. Our homes are liberated. I hear the chains falling. Oh, yes, God. Oh, yeah. I hear the chains falling. Every knee bows at the name of Jesus. Every knee bows. Every knee bows. It doesn't matter how long. 
it, 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 it doesn't matter how long it has taken effect. It bows right now at the name of Jesus. It bows and chains are falling. Chains are falling. Chains are falling. Chains are falling now, 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 now. Oh, Ramana Kamozi Anama. Whether it is our mindset, it is being renewed because we are made a new creation in Christ Jesus. Every chain is falling down. Oh, yeah. Oh, I hear Thank you, Father. As there's limitless power in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We stand on the victory that you've given. Thank you, God. Hey, Yaraba. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for the finished work of Jesus Christ. Mm. Jesus, oh God, I thank you for what you have done, that we may have dominion mm. and power. God, you thank are you, far God. above all principalities and powers. We yes, exist God. in Jesus, who is above mm. every principality. Brother, and power. Brother, I thank you, God. Almighty God, because we are seated above in heavenly places. We know who we God. are and we exist, oh God, in the capacity of our Father on this earth. Therefore, oh God, we decree, oh God, that every chain is broken. Father, we break these chains, these mental chains. These we liberate them, oh God. Let the scales be fallen. You are not powerless. You are not powerless. You are not defeated. Jesus Christ paid the price for you to have the strength, and you receive it now in Jesus' name by the power of the God who is set to restore you even now. Even now, even now, Father, I thank you. Every demonic manipulation has come to a perpetual end. This is we that are in, in Christ Jesus. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every manipulation has come to a perpetual end. In the name of Jesus, every evil root planted has been uprooted and we plant the seed of Jesus Christ. We plant the seed of Jesus Christ and we harvest the foundation of Jesus Christ. The finished Hallelujah. Father, I thank you because chains have broken. Chains yes. have broken. Chains yes. have broken. The eyes of the blind shall see now. The eyes of the blind shall see now. The eyes of the blind shall see now. Every veil has been torn. The manipulation is exposed. And I thank you in the name of Jesus because you have restored. And I thank you, oh God. I thank you in the name of Jesus. And I cover each and every one of us in our homes by the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the spirit of understanding who now dwells with us, oh God. Processing your will for our lives. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Father, I give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Okay. Guys, thank you for staying till the end of the webinar. If anybody wants to reach out to me, if anybody wants to reach out to Joy for prayers, for anything, please let us know. Like, the works of Satan have been destroyed since Jesus, and we are going to manifest it in our lives. God is moving to destroy every work of Satan. He has no rights. He has no rights. No rights. He has no rights. He has no rights. And I need you to know this. I need you to know he has no rights to steal from you, to take what is yours. As long as God said you will have it, it is yours to have. It is yours to have. So God bless you guys. Okay, I think I've come to the end and I will see you. Joy, if you want to say something, but I think I'm done here. Oh, I will see you guys. God bless you, woman of God. That was powerful. <laughs> God bless you, woman of God. God Thanks bless you. you. I was trying not to scream when he started singing, you know. You know. <laughs> 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Thank you for sacrificing and being here. God bless you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. God bless you and is doing the work in your lives. Do not allow them to shift you from what happened tonight. All right. God bless you guys. Take care of yourselves. I was sorry. I was just going to briefly say that every time the word of God comes, Satan would come to try it. And, and the proof that the words that have been said are rooted in us and that there is a harvest is that the words will bear fruit, yes. even though Beverly has prayed. And we trust God that the word, words you have heard would take root. So even when Satan comes, because he will come, he will come, he will come to try you. And But you are more than conquerors. Yes, the blood of Jesus has spoken for you. Mercy has taken your place. Mercy Amen. has taken the place in that situation. The mercy of God Amen. speaks for you. The blood was shed for you. The mercy Amen. that is in the blood of Jesus is actually the reason for the manifestation Amen. of his promises. Amen. And that blood Amen. has been shed. So I put the blood Amen. of Jesus on every situation. Your Amen. mind, your health, your finances, Amen. your marriage, Amen. blood of Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. I place the blood of Jesus in your home, in the mind of your Amen. husband. Mercy Amen. takes the place of every manipulation Amen. and speaks Amen. and tears it down Amen. every stronghold in Amen. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for that reminder. Woman of God. Iron sharpens <laughs> iron. Iron sharpens iron. Thank you guys. Listen, be blessed. Okay. Marriage is beautiful. I was right there. I was right there. I was there. Me and my husband, we were, listen, but God, but am I not shining? Please look at me. Hello. <laughs> it, it, it is possible to for god's glory to find expression okay i thought the devil lied to me and even said my husband would not help me fulfill destiny he's the one who set up everything right now that i'm talking i don't know how to do all this stuff he lied to me mm. the devil lied to me told me there's somebody else for me you don't deserve this but he's the one doing it behind the scenes god removed the scales from my eyes and i was determined to get my manifestation I'm telling you, because I knew that the devil was stealing from me and he manipulated all of that. But I thank God that God has gone before you mm, to restore everything he said you will have. You will have it. So God bless you guys. See you next Friday. See okay. you. Bye. Okay, I don't know how to end it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, just leave. <laughs> Everybody's just gonna leave. Okay, let me. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.